Hey, I'm Tyler Edlin, and in this episode we'll be talking about art challenges, contests, and in particular, since the results were released this week, the ILM challenge with my good friend Dimitri and his journey through uh, participating in it. Hello everyone, I'm Tyler Edlin. I'm going to do a new episode of Brush Sauce Theater here and I have my good friend Dimitri Milouche here and we want to talk about the benefits of participating in uh, open kind of public challenges. And recently uh, ILM or you know Industrial Light and Magic held a, a large multi-staged challenge in which participants were, were tasked with uh, painting several different scenes and concepts based on specs and designs that they gave out to everybody. So yeah, just say hello to everybody, Dimitri. Hey everyone. Awesome. So basically, since I didn't have time, I've been modeling. I've been remodeling my house all summer, and he participated in every stage of it. I just we want to run through all his kind of pieces, and we could talk about how he grew and the different types of challenges he faced uh, with doing this. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So why don't you just get? It? He's going to be taking us through a little tour here. So why don't you open up the like the first the first round of images that you had to do for this? Yeah, so the first challenge, or the, actually the first phase of the challenge was basically, uh, it was called the moment. And the brief was to uh, take uh, the existing worlds of the first, or the original trilogy, mm -hmm. and do key frames of uh, situ situations in the film that may have happened at some point, but weren't filmed. Oh, so like uh, cut scenes, like lo the lost scenes on, on like a Blu-ray or something. Uh, yes, uh, the first trilogy. The whole challenge was in the in the first, the original. Awesome. So the first, the first idea and piece that I did was this. It's Boba Fett on Tatooine. Now I'm not particularly happy with uh, with how it came out. I could have done a better job, but I was on a tight schedule I came in late because I was at uh, IFCC in Croatia awesome. and uh, for most of the challenge I really didn't know what to do so, <laughs> so how, how long approximately did they give you for this first round uh, like for the first and for the second round I think it was uh, I'm gonna lie to you probably but I think it was about four weeks maybe Three, something like that. Okay, so few. It was a pretty. It was a decent, decent amount of time. So basically, what I did is I had the idea of putting Tatooine. I don't really remember the reason, <laughs> to be honest. But I got both of the models from free models on the internet, popped them into cinema, put in a physical sky, lit the scene, rendered it out, and just started painting over it really loosely. Like uh, I didn't really do much painting painting for uh, for this piece, but I just cleaned up a couple of things that were a bit glitchy from from the models themselves. And that's basically it for for this one. I'm still not really happy with it, but it is what it is. Yeah. No. It, no. It's really cool. And yeah, for someone that's not particular, that's that's the good thing about doing these sorts of challenges. They get it, as an artist, it challenges to kind of tackle either subject matters or themes that you may not be particularly used to or would kind of and um, otherwise tackle on your own, right? Yeah, and the thing uh, the thing with this challenge that I've that I've personally learned the most is uh, film compositions and uh, mm -hmm. how would I say that? Like uh, a, like a cinematic feel. Uh, yeah, just get, uh, getting a cinematic feel for for the piece with with the atmosphere the composition the the format the scene is in stuff like that yeah because i think creating kind of either traditional concepts or illustrations is a lot different than kind of creating those kind of key vfx art pieces for for films there's just a lot of aesthetically it, it's just very different and different objectives yeah. with it and definitely i mean it, it's it's even a di it's a different type of brief like mm -hmm. you you may get uh three-page script for one scene and then you have to think about how to structure that that scene within that story 
Mm-hmm. And that's uh, it's tough, but when you when you get into it, it's really really fun. Awesome. I mean, it's really fun overall. So. And you did a second piece as well for this first round. Is that correct? Uh, yes. yes. Did they uh, want two pieces, or you were able to just submit two? Because you had the uh, time. I think, uh, as far as I can remember, the uh, it had to be two. You could do more, but two was minimum. Two minimum. Okay. So the second one I did was uh, attack on Yavin. That that's how I called it. Uh, awesome. Basic, like the Millennium Falcon. Doing a, not really a counterattack, but a, more of a guerrilla style attack on. On some Star Destroyers. Um, <laughs> They're going to take them all out. No, but it's yeah, really cool. So, uh, yeah, but basically the, the whole thing is also the uh, same as the, the first piece. It was all, the models were all downloaded uh, from, from the internet. Uh, the, um, the Star Destroyer was modeled uh, by uh, Ansel Sau. He's a really Ooh. talented uh, ship modeler and designer, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. They, I, as far as I can remember, I think ILM actually commissioned him to make a couple models for them. I believe it. So, yeah. Uh, all of them were free models. I actually had a few uh, few TIE, tie fighters, mm-hmm. but ended up, they were too small in the end, so I scrapped them and put in a couple of photos I found online. I mean, yeah, this, this piece is really fantastic, and I bet they loved it as well. It's just kind of beautifully I'm, I'm, composed and lit. I'm personally really pleased with uh, with this piece, and I have to give a shout-out to to uh, Alex Brady, who I, who helped me out with, with this piece, just to get it looking more, mm-hmm. more cinematic and getting some stuff right, like the smoke and getting the getting the the viewers eye to go to the millennium falcon first yeah because f- physics but, behave very differently up in space i i'd assume I, we actually talked for i think maybe 2 hours just about this piece and how to get looking looking good awesome well i think it certainly paid off yeah so then uh, you you submit these and then uh, I guess some time passes, right? And then the the judges kind of critique and let every it let you know if you were, you move on to the second round. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's correct. So they uh, we have let's say about three weeks to finish all of these, and I think it's about a week for them to judge everything, and then they let you know if mm-hmm. you've gone to the second round or not. Awesome. So actually, I can I can show some of the. 3D, actually the raw render that I yeah, that sure. I have. This is like, this is where it started basically. Oh wow! So yeah, you, I, you push I, that quite far. Yeah, I screwed up a little bit with with the lighting because lighting doesn't really work like this in in space. But it is what it is. I yeah, can't. And cinematically, it looks awesome though, right? <laughs> yeah. So I guess I, yeah, yeah, that's a decision we all have to make, correct? If if something is it, is that physically going to be tangible, or is that more visually kind of the the path to kind of take? It's always kind of that balancing the scales of what's visually awesome, but has that cool factor, and what's more physically plausible. Yeah. Now you there's a, there always has to be a balance between yeah. those two, especially in film. So, yeah, so awesome. I can jump into the the second round, which was which was uh, nicknamed uh, the ride. And here, the brief was we needed to create uh, new vehicles again in the uh, aesthetics of uh, the first trilogy. Awesome. Uh, the first vehicle that I did, I. Hey, now, is, have you done a lot of vehicle work prior to this? Uh, actually, none. Absolutely. Awesome. So again, another just challenges really, even to, even challenges that aren't on the level of the scale that this one was, which I mean, all things considered, looks like a huge undertaking and a huge kind of commitment. There, I mean, there are a lot of challenges and, and contests that are a lot smaller in scope. But either either way, it it really does force you out of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, it really it really does, and I'm I'm really happy that it did. Uh, so th- this is basically how the this this is not even the finished version of the uh, <clears throat> of the barge, but this is sort of how it looked like in in cinema as I was making it. And the second one I went with I was I wanted to do uh, either a fighter and I one of my favorite 
designs in the whole Star Wars universe is the B wing. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, the one that flies horizontally, vertically. Oh, and yeah, the one with like the giant, uh, like the wing, the one wing, right? Uh, yeah. So that's what I went with, and these two scenes came out of it. So that's uh, most of the ship I built myself. I uh, the cockpit of the ship I. I believe I took from from the Millennium Falcon, mm -hmm. and the guns uh, the guns here on the side were from a Y wing. So yeah, you used a, like a little bit of your own design aesthetics, and then kit bashed parts of it to blend it in with the old trilogy, and then you know give it your own paint job. So yeah, I think that's an awesome kind of tactic and technique. Yeah, and uh, we were we were lucky to to be able to use use ILM's process that they've been using for the past. I don't know, 30, 40 years mm -hmm. of just taking whatever parts we can find and making something cool out of it. Yep. So I'm really, I was really happy with with this scene, but I wanted to do more. So that's when this one came in. Actually, I think this is not even the finished version, but uh, it might be somewhere around here. No, it looks really nice. Yeah, so th this is the finished version. I just added, like, a lens flare. Oh, yeah, really cool, though. Subtle. So, yeah, I'm actually really... I love doing sunset scenes because of the the colors. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the purples, the oranges, and stuff like that, and the effect of the, the sun gives to the models. The They take on the, the color of the sun, which is what a, an effect I really like, so... That's why I did this one. This one was pretty basic. I put a, uh, put the put the fighters in this uh, in the scene. Put a a sky in the background so uh, so it reflects some of the uh, some of the bits into the into some of the reflective stuff that I had on the on the ships. Rendered it out, and that's basically it. Not I put gorgeous. a sky in the background. Painted it up a bit, and that's basically it. So this was three pieces on round two. You were able to do. Uh, yeah, I was uh, with this one. I was done within a few days, maybe one or two or three, two or three days. Mm -hmm. So I already finished this one up. I don't know if I even went back to it and added some stuff. I might may have, but I don't really remember. Yeah, looks yeah, great. So. <laughs> Yeah, so that's round two. And then they eventually progress you to round three. Uh, yeah, so I got so somehow... five pieces in. Yeah, somehow I got into the finals, which was honestly a huge surprise to me uh, compared to everybody else that was with me in the challenge. So I was really happy, but really scared at the same time. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't know... I really didn't know what to expect, and... They really hit us with a huge bombshell that we were gonna have uh, six mini challenges throughout the that uh, whole month, mm -hmm. with uh, three days to finish the pieces. Oh wow! Yeah, that, so much that was, quicker than the previous. Yeah, the finals were basically like a simulation of how uh, how you would work at ILM on an everyday basis. When so, you're... yeah, this would be, like, a good way to um, assess, like, if, if your your dream job is to work at ILM or you want to work at maybe, like, even a, a similar type of studio, this is, like, the realities of what a, a typical kind of artist may, may face during, during um, a, you know, a, a studio like that. Yeah, and actually they have it even, even worse. They, they were pretty easy on us as far as, like, <laughs> the time frame and stuff like that. But then again, you know, I had a really tough time with it because uh, I had a few freelance gigs at the time, and uh, I hate uh, constantly repeating it, but I work on a five-year-old laptop. Mm -hmm. I just can't afford to upgrade it. It's a lot it. for that little guy to handle. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really tough, and he had a really tough time uh, balancing everything out with the challenge and, and the work. But he pushed through. Like the the little guy is a is a real beast. I'm really I'm really proud of him. So I managed to finish 
well, not finished, but get it to a decent state, uh, get two pieces to a decent state. Everything else was somewhere in the middle or not finished at all. Mm -hmm. I just didn't have the, the time to, to get that all done. So uh, the first uh, the first brief uh, was on basically on, on Hoth. The rebellion lost, obviously, but something happened. In that time frame, they escape and they mount a counterattack. Mm -hmm. That was basically the brief. I did, I think, two, maybe even three. Uh, scene three different scenes to see what I could come up with for for that for that challenge. I ultimately went with uh, the second one I did, and uh, it's sort of empty and without characters because I'm crappy with characters. <laughs> so <laughs> I I tried to avoid them as much as possible. But yeah, it, it, I could definitely see the. It would definitely look. You could get a little more scale or, or even epicness in there if you had like a couple dudes running and tripping on the ground, getting fried by by lasers or something. Yeah. But you know, yep. for for the ships though, that looks really great. Yeah, all of them. Uh, just like with the previous ones, these were these are all free models from from the internet. Thank God we have free three D models to work with. Yeah. That was a uh, that was awesome. But this piece in, in general was m more more of an homage to Ralph McQuarrie and the legacy he sort of left when he when he passed away, mm -hmm. and the the world he created with uh, with Star Wars and the artwork artwork that he did for it. Uh, that was something that I really wanted to do because I like most of us I grew up with Star Wars and. It was one of the ma major reasons I got into this industry, which is a bit of a cliche, but it is what it is. Most of us got into it because of it. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. So that's that's the first one, and I have a raw render somewhere around here. I yeah, this was it. This was the raw render from from Cinema. Oh, nice. So have you had to um, have you has your workflow at all improved at all since doing this have you have you kind of picked up any new kind of tricks or or, or techniques you know in it and how you kind of produce images regularly from from uh, doing this challenge well I mean not really but it so just you had a familiar sense that uh, you kind of just used a lot of old tricks and, and knowledge with your experience prior to making maybe similar types of images uh, yeah, I uh, it, that was most of it. Like I learned a couple of new things, like setting up the the camera better so it has a more cinematic feel to it, mm -hmm. uh, better compositions, uh, better renders. By the way, I use the standard render in Cinema for those who want to know. Yeah, uh, so you didn't you didn't go with a more fancier one, something like like Corona or um, with a, I actually octane, couldn't get right? Corona. I, wa I wanted to use it, but I couldn't get it to work. It was missing a, a DLL file for some reason. So, you're, yeah, you're using Cinema 4D, which I've mentioned before on this channel. is a kind of a great 3D software for, for generalists or even people that aren't or for aiming for 2D art. But you used free models and used the, the, the basic kind of free renderer that came within the software itself. So nothing nothing too crazy to kind of complete uh, the, ch the challenge work you did here. Yeah. So awesome. So yeah, would you? I think it's safe to say you you've grown as an individual and as an artist just by competing in this this challenge that I, ILM had. Oh, definitely, awesome. definitely. And so I, you would would you rec would you recommend that to to anybody looking to kind of improve their game? Yeah, I I would definitely recommend any type of challenge, any type, anything that that pops up that you could you could do like. There are challenges for environment artists, for concept artists, illustrators, uh, motion graphic, and anything you can you can find that you think is good mm -hmm. for you and would be fun for you, go for it. Even even if you think you don't have the skill set or you're afraid, don't be. Just go for it. Oh no problem. Uh, so awesome, man. Uh, where where can people go to find out about challenges? These things to you know kind of stay on top of things. Where, like where did you hear about this one? Uh, I heard about it 
from actually from Leonard Teo. Uh, he I think he posted uh, posted the challenge on on Facebook like as a promotion, mm-hmm. and I just I flipped. I was uh, <laughs> immediate immediately I was like I'm doing this. I don't care care how long it takes, how hard it is. I'm doing it. It's ILM. And actually, the the best place right now to get really cool challenges that are fun and difficult at the same time is art station yeah and i've the, seen a, i've seen a few with art station before yeah it's there's no uh, better a better place to find it and i've competed in two so far description yeah so uh, art station's a great place to find out about these i know a lot of the online schools probably like uh, you know bobby chu schoolism i know cgma has their own contests my yes, my own well hmm. Uh, Sin Studio as well. They have uh, challenges. Yeah, and lots of lots of studios. So just getting it involved with the community, looking around, checking out groups is a, the best way to kind of find out about these sort of things and to challenge yourself and improve as an artist. And so, just as of this week, actually, uh, Art Station put the IML uh, ILM challenge page up, so you can everybody can view the winners and their their entries and submissions. All that stuff. So the you know, first place was given to Mario, you know, second to Morgan Yan, and third, you know, to Fred. And everybody can check it out. And it's, it just goes to show you can really check out just from their winters. They have three vastly different styles in terms of different techniques, uh, different types of presentations. Very kind of comic-y and hand-drawn, just kind of maybe colored in a little Photoshop, you know, very kind of photo-bashed, and then has a very kind of painted aesthetic. So you never know when entering these types of challenges what the judges will be looking for. And um, so just don't feel discouraged if you don't know a particular software or if, if you're just lacking confidence in general. They, they, look, they look at all kinds of things and all kinds of subject matters. Uh, and it's just really kind of worth noting that you know, definitely you can use them to push your ability. But, of course, keep in mind, too, that when you enter these things, and I think they should be more geared to people looking for work and um, trying to get exposure. There's people, as we can see here, like Matt Rhodes, who's got like 20 years, I think, experience in the industry and just killing like scene after scene of like... But again, very different style, very different take, and that's just the reality of it. Because when even when we graduate from from schools or from our our, our art studios, wherever we're training, if we're training at all, in a in a kind of more traditional sense, we're put out into the uh, workforce against people just like this, and, and even more that have twenty, thirty, you know, even forty years experience, and we have to com- basically compete for the same job against these sort of people. So I guess it it does kind of reflect that as it is. But yeah, the page is up. Go to IML Challenge ILM challenge to dot art station and you can view the winners and all their entries and find their pages if you want to look this sort of thing up um but so th- thank you for uh coming on the, the episode today uh dimitri i really appreciate it no problem and i'm sure uh, many others enjoyed to see your, uh and got to enjoy looking at your journey here through this uh contest i hope they did and i hope they got something out of it awesome so uh, yeah, thanks again, and I'm sure I'll have you back on in the future. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, please su- click subscribe. I also want, thought it'd be cool to have a Facebook and Twitter. I know everyone else does, so why not? So be sure to follow these things, link below, and if you don't want to miss any updates. Did you enjoy what you just watched and are looking for a more in-depth, full-length video? Please check out my premium tutorial shop everyday prices with epic results and if you're if you want a guaranteed boost in your own skill i also offer a one-on-one mentorship just email me now for a rates and availability missed the last episode and want you can catch it right here well that's it for me this time i'll see you all in the next video 